So as well as the definition for the expected value or the long run average that we gave in the last video, we also have a couple of handy rules regarding the expected value. And so we're just going to start off with the simplest of those rules. So let's suppose if I asked you to give me the expected value, so the long run average of a number, just a regular old number, it could be three, okay? Well, this number doesn't really have a probability distribution. It's always going to be A, you know, with probability one. And so if I ask you for the long run average of something that occurs certainly, it's just going to be that. It's just going to be that number, A, okay? So let's suppose now that we take some random variable x, we multiply it by some constant b. And b is just like a, b is not a random variable, b is just a constant, that's why it's in lower case. And then we ask for the expected value of b times that random variable. Well, it can be helpful here just to write out the, you know, the formula for this random variable in the discrete case, okay, which is going to be the sum of all possible x's of not x, but bx times the probability of getting that particular value x, okay? Well, now we know that this is just a sum over all the possible values x. And since b is just a constant, it doesn't depend on the particular value of x that I'm working with currently. And so I can just rewrite this with the b at the front of the summation notation, okay? So b sum of x from px. Okay, well, this is just the definition of the expected value of x. And so we can rewrite this one final time to get the result that we wanted, which was b multiplied by the expected value of x, multiplied by the long run average. And this makes intuitive sense. If I take every possible value that this random variable takes and multiply it by some constant b, then it's sort of intuitive that, you know, when I ask someone for the long run average of this new random variable b times x, it's just going to be b multiplied by the long run average of the original variable x. Okay. Now to a less obvious identity. And so let's suppose if someone asks you for the expected value of the sum of two random variables. And so until this point, we've dealt with a constant and a random variable multiplied by a constant, but these are two separate random variables or with their own probability distribution functions. Okay, and well, we can write this as sort of like a sum of all the possible values of x and y. So all of the possible combinations of x and y, just of little x plus y multiplied by not px of x, not py of y, but the joint density, the joint probability mass function, pxy of x and y. And so this basically says, so for every particular combination of x and y, I have the sum of x and y multiplied by the probability of getting that particular combination of x and y. Okay. Well, since we've got a sum in a summation notation, we can sort of just expand over this bracket and split this into two parts, okay? And the first part is the sum, again, over all the possible values of x and y of just x times the joint probability distribution function, the joint probability mass function, sorry, plus the sum, again, over all possible values of x and y of y times the joint probability mass function, pxy, okay? We're sort of close to something that looks fairly familiar, but we're not quite there yet. There's one final step that we have to do, okay? Now remember that when we've got a joint probability mass function, and we sum over one of the variables, so let's say we sum this probability mass function over all the possible values of y. Remember when we do that, we just get the marginal probability mass function for the other variable. And so if we sum over all the y's, for this probability mass function, we're just going to get the marginal probability mass function for x, px of x. And similarly, over here, if we sum over all the possible values of x, okay, we're just going to get the probability mass function, the marginal probability mass function for y. And if we sum over all the y's over here and all the x's over here, that's going to affect this, this probability distribution function, but it's not going to affect x because we're summing over the y and it's not going to affect the y because we're summing over the x's and so we can write this out and so we've still got the x's left to sum over 
the x is not affected. And we've just got, since we're summing over the y's, the marginal probability mass function here. Okay. And similarly over here, we still got the y's to sum over since we summed over just the x's. The y is unaffected, but this joint probability mass function for x and y, since we summed over x, just becomes the marginal probability mass function for y. And well, this should look very familiar because this is, after all, just the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. And so we have this neat result where the expected value, so the expectation of a sum of random variables, is just the sum of the expectations of those two random variables. And so like this one before, this sort of makes a fair bit of intuitive sense. And so if I don't roll one die, if I roll two die, x and y, and I ask for the average value of not just one of their face values, but the sum of their face values, it sort of makes intuitive sense that this is just going to be the sum of the average values of each of their individual face values. Okay, and so to, to cut this lesson off, we're going to write out like a particularly big, messy formula to capture all of these different identities that we've just discussed. And so we're going to start on the left-hand side with the expected value of, you know, a times some random variable x plus b times some other random variable y plus just some constant, okay? And we can separate each of these as the expected value of ax plus the expected value of by plus the expected value of c. And we can simplify one step further and write a times the expected value of x plus b times the expected value of y plus just using this identity up here, c. And so we can combine all the rules which we've covered to transform this relatively messy expression into just some sort of linear combinations of the expected values of x and y and some constant.